In today's show, we're going to learn about Power Apps component libraries. So now you can build those little components, right? Those modular things like the, the navigation at the top or a pop-up or little bits of functionality. And you can publish them via a component library so anyone in your environment can use them in their own apps. And better yet, when you change it in the library, it'll propagate around the org so everyone can update their apps and get to your copy. Truly making components finally the scalable solution we've all wanted. So let's learn more about that. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to learn about Power Apps component libraries. And so component libraries is something we've been waiting on for a while, right? About a year ago, we got components, and that was the ability to build little modular sets of functionality. So maybe it was a header or footer bar, it was a pop-up, it was just something in your app that you wanted to build once and reuse. And that worked great, but it basically, if you tried to use it in multiple apps, you were importing copies. And so you might have seven instances across seven different apps of the same component. And that was a nightmare when you decide you want to change the colors or tweak it just a little bit. So what Microsoft has now given us, which is still in an experimental state, but that's okay, is this ability to build component libraries. So I'm going to build a component, put it in my library, and then I can share the library out across the org and so other people can consume it. This is a pretty cool little piece of functionality that is quite frankly, something we've needed for a while. Because this idea that, you know, not only can we publish it out, but then if we update it, then it pushes down to them and it asks them, hey, you know, Shane changed the main header nav. Do you want to consume that in our app? You get to pick. Even better, we're going to look at how you can take and you can edit that component. So maybe I pushed it out, but you don't like what I did, right? My sense of style isn't the same as yours. I'm not too offended. But what you can do is you can take it and you can get a copy in your app and so then you break it from the chain, so you're no longer beholden to my changes, but you start with my base to do your own thing. It's pretty neat. So I think the only thing for us to do now is just let's just jump over to my desktop. Let's take a look at this and have some fun. All right, so over here on my desktop, we're going to start at the beginning. And so if you click on apps over here on the left, then what you're going to see up here at the top, you should have noticed already, is there's component libraries. And it is in preview right now, but that's okay. This is one of those features that's in preview and it's on its way up, right? It is just going to get better and keep going. So when it comes to components, component libraries, this type of stuff, I'm trying not to overdo it, right? Like I don't want to go get, you know, spend a hundred hours building a component because Microsoft might still change things while we're in preview, but using it for some, you know, core functionality, like a consistent header and footer or my pop-ups or, you know, those type of things, I'm all in on uh, components already. In my customer apps, my test apps, my own personal apps, everywhere I'm seeing these. So here you can see, I've already built a couple. We'll ignore my first and my second, and let's build my third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on New Component Library up here at the top, and we're just going to call it Third Component Library, right? Because I am really creative. There we go, and we're going to say Create. So after a few seconds, we are dropped into the normal Power Apps looking studio. And you'll see that they've already kind of started a component one here, and you can now start building and doing what you want to do with this component. And so I don't want to overthink the first one, so let's just make a super simple component so we can kind of see how this all facilitates itself. So I'm going to do an insert, and how about we're going to throw an icon, and we're going to go find my favorite, the smiley face. Where is it? There it is. We'll make it real big. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. We'll make it the whole thing. Whoop. And then maybe, you know, we'll just, um, heck, that's enough, right? We've got a component, the smiley face component. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to say File, We've already got a name up here, but we need to save our changes. So I'm going to save this component. So we'll hit save. And so then now it is published. It's just like the first time you save an app, right? When you, the first save makes version one. So this one is saved and published. Now notice right away you see the share button. And so the reason for the share button here is because component libraries, you control the security, who can use it. So if we click on share, you can see here that, you know, I still have versions. So we're going to be able to do versions. We can roll back just the same we do with apps. Pretty cool. Uh, but you can also hit share here and right now I'm the only owner and I'm the only one that can use it. So if I want other people to be able to use this component library to build their own apps, I got to share it with them, right? So maybe I want to share with Chewy. And so with Chewy, I can be like, all right, Chewy, you know what? I'm going to let you be a co-owner. I'm going to let Chewy come in here and help me customize our component library for the company. That'd be easy enough. But maybe when I add Ferguson, Ferguson the cat, when we add Ferguson, he's just a user. And so Ferguson can only uh, consume or, you know, use these components we push out, but Ferguson can't change the library that everyone's using. So we hit share 
and they would be notified. So that's the exact same model that we have when we build Power Apps. So nothing new to learn there. But now that we've taken and published this, let's go and look at how we use it in an app. So I'm going to go to my apps and I am going to say, all right, I want to use components. Now on the old way you do it, you'd go over here to custom, new component, import component, export component, no, this is not what I want you to do anymore, right? If you click on this new component, or no, if we click on import, I could upload a file, or I could you know, select one out of an app. This whole thing that I'm showing you right here, this has been deprecated. So stop using this. If you've been using it today, this is bad. And the other problem with this is it was a one-time import. It wasn't a link. It was just grab that component, make me a copy of it, so I can do my own thing. So this whole methodology, gone, deprecated. Bye. So instead what you gotta do is they've kind of hidden this from us. I like I had a hard time finding it and I kept looking like surely they're doing it somewhere else. But best I know this is the only place to do it. You click on the plus over here on the left. And so then down at the bottom it says get more components. Like I can't believe that's gonna stay there forever. So if you're watching this video a year from now and it's moved, I'm, hopefully it's more obvious. Anyway, we'll say get more components. And so then what this does is it shows me all the component libraries that I have built. So my first, my second, my third or all the ones that have been shared with me. So if Chewy had made one, then we'd see Chewy's component library here. So I can choose which of these I want to import and you see different ones have different things. So I'm just going to choose uh, that one we just built. So component one and do an import. And so then now I have the component. Once again, you're tempted to come up here like you've been doing and use it. It doesn't show up here. You've got to use it from this import, but now it says library components over here on the left. And then you'll see my terribly named component one. We add component one, boom, it is in our app, and it is you know all the fun things that we did over on the other side. So that was all we had to do. And now you know we just work with it the same way. If it had input output properties, no big deal. Also, I guess I should point out I'm gonna kind of mostly skip over like the mechanics of building components. I've got a video for that, I'll link to it, I don't know, somewhere around here. We'll put a link in there for that. Um, I don't want to concentrate on building it, I just want to talk about the libraries today. But there is a whole video on that already. Okay, so now that we've done this, we're like, all right, this is fine, you know, yay. But so one of the power things I want you to see is like how it gets worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file, we're going to name this app real quick, and we'll just call this video uh, component, I can't spell, demo, like that. And then we'll say save, and save. Okay, so we've got that app, right, that's consuming our component. So that's great. So then now if we go back over here, so back to my third component library, and I'm like, all right, well, they didn't really like the boringness of my smiley face, so maybe they want me to kind of make this a little smaller. And then they wanted to throw a label on here, so we'll throw a label down here. Yeah, we'll center that thing up. It looks great. Oop. Oh my goodness, I can't do this. There we go. So then there's my text, and then we'll just throw a property on it real quick just so we can remember how that works. So we go over here, new custom property, and we'll call this... Um, my text, very creative name change. Control A, Control C, so I'm gonna paste this in so I don't have to type it a bunch. So then there we go. And so then now we're gonna make that an input and a text. We're gonna say create. All right, so now we've made our component better. Now, if you wanted to test your component, you might notice over here on the left that there are a screen. So these screens aren't meant to be used, like they're not actual functional screens that you're gonna do anything with but they let you test your component because what I can do is I can say, hey, right here, I want to add component one. Oh yeah, there's component one. And so then now that I've added it, I can go and test and be like, oh look, there's my text and be like, words go here. Very, very fancy. And so we can kind of get away to see, oh, did I not do that? I did. Oh, I <laughs> see, and this is why we test because I can see that I, even though I made the input property, I didn't wire it up. So go back to the component side, be like, hey, text, you're not supposed to be text anymore. You're supposed to be component one dot my text. So then now if we go back over here, yeah, words go here. Good job, me. So now I feel better that I have uh, got this thing working. So that's the nice thing about the screens. They're only here to help you test and make sure your component does what you think it does. So I'm glad I did that. I didn't screw it up on purpose. Shh. <laughs> so hit file and save. And so just like with your apps in the real world, right now my changes are saved, but I haven't published them out, so none of my consumers are getting them. But so what I can do now is I'm gonna say publish, and then publish this version, and so then now I've made and updated that. So, 
Over here, right, this is our, where we're consuming it. We're going to close out of this app, right? So I went home for the day. I come in the next day. I'm going to open this thing up. There's my video component demo. And when we open this app up, what we're going to see is it's going to ask us, it's going to be like, look, the component library updates available. I'm going to say review. And it tells me the third component library got updated. Fun. So we're going to say update. And so then now, look at that. Now it has that text capability. And now I can come over here and be like, hey, my text equals nice job. And so we've taken and we've pushed that around. Now, you see what happened there? I've seen this happen a couple of times. Uh, and this is back to where we're in a preview state. But notice that I put in the text and it lost the text, right? And so we'll do it again. Try again. Nope. Oh. And so I ran into this a few times. If this happens to you, it's not the end of the world. What you have to do is what I refer to as rebooting Power Apps. So we're going to say save. We're going to close out. We're going to open that app right back up. If it ever finishes refreshing. Oh, nope, right there. And so when you open the app back up, now it's not going to prompt me. It hasn't changed. But then now what it'll do is if we go to here to my text and be like, good job. Now, good job sticks. So that's just one of the bugs. Like I said, this is still in preview, so they're allowed to have bugs. But after an update, some of my properties don't behave until I save and close and come back in again. I've seen that a few times, so I'm glad that happened here on video so you guys could see it and I can tell you about that. But now you kind of get your head wrapped around this, right? So the idea is that I can facilitate all of the things that we need here in this component library. And then we can just consume that downwards. And if we need it anywhere, you know, it works. And keep in mind also over here, so this is this component, but I might end up going here, so get more components. And so in one of my libraries, do, do, do this one, I put my header component in there. So if we do an import here, right now in my library components, I have my actual header one with all the greatness that is that particular component, right? So it has my images and all of the fun things that I was expecting. Um, so then I can start configuring this. And that's my kind of consistent nav and all the apps I built here, Power Apps 911. And a lot of my customer apps, we have a very similar style, right? We just get kind of this broad header up there. But the same thing, I could jump over there. And if we decide we are no longer Power Apps Purple, we now use Flow Blue. I don't know why we would do that, but we might then I could just go change the component. And then when I refresh my apps, it would all just kind of flow in. So that's pretty nice. Also, though, keep in mind, maybe you imported this, right? You imported it from me and you're like, Shane, I hate the fact that you put this logo over here all the time, right? No one wants to see that. Fair enough. So what you could do is now that you're in your own app, right? I'm in my, uh, my app. I've imported that component. There is nothing stopping me from grabbing it and then saying edit component. So when I do this, though, it says, hey, I'm going to make a copy. So I will no longer be sunk, sink, sink, sunk. I don't know, whatever that word is. I'll no longer be connected to the one in the library. I'll have a standalone instance. Oh, I edited the wrong one. But so now that I've edited this one, right, I can then come in here and be like, you know what? We really always want the smiley face to be that color. There we go. And so then now in my app, I have component one, two. Notice it didn't change this one. I have a standalone instance, so I'd come back over here. Oh, oh, nope, oh, right here. I come over here, I get rid of this guy, and then I would now be able to insert component one, two, which is a component that only exists in this app. And so that's how you can fork or break away from the ones that are being pushed down from you know your corporate overlords. If, uh, if you don't like their color pattern, you didn't like my blue, you want to have an orange one. I understand, that's my favorite color then there it is, and now you can configure it all the same ways. You can add additional properties, whatever you want, because you have a standalone version of that component. So that is that piece, that is this piece. Um, the other thing that I want to point out with components is there are some nuances. So for example, I'm gonna throw a new screen in here, blank. I'm gonna go grab another component. So go over here to my, get more components. And so in here, I have my loading one, right? This is my standard loading spinner. Now, when I brought this one in the first time, oop, so it's called loading, I was like weirded out because if I go and open it in the library, there's an image. And I'm like, why don't I see my image? Right, let's just go open that real quick. So go back to, I think that's in my second library. So edit this. 
And so then over here, right, I can now click on it. And so if I look at the loading one, look, there's the little loading spinner. So there's actually an image here. And so this is one of the things you need to know about components. Um, things like media, they don't travel with your component. So over here in the app where I imported it, I didn't get the spinner because it brought the control over, and it's, but it's referencing a broken link to a media that it doesn't have. So what I need to know is then like, all right, it's looking for something called Power App Spinner 2. So if I go to this app, right, this is the, the app we've been using the whole time. Yep. And so here, if I come in here, I'm like, all right, well, let me click on media over here on the left. This is new that this is here, but cool. And I'm going to say I want to upload an image. And then here are my logos. There is a something Power App Spinner 2 right there. And so we open it. And so now that I pulled that in, this, con this control is like, oh, yeah, yay. I know where that is. So I found that a little jarring the first time also. If you want to put images or things like that in and you want to embed them in the app, then you're going to have to make sure that you tell whoever consumes the component that they need to manually add that to their app. I'm guessing this is something that will change over time, but that's where we're at today. So probably what would have been better, now that I know this is a problem, is I could have made this component, let's just reference a file straight in SharePoint. Let me open my SharePoint site. All right, so there's my SharePoint site, and so then I'm going to go here to my documents. You know what? I'm just going to upload that same spinner. So I'm going to say upload files. And so we'll scroll down here. And so then there's Power App Spinner 2, uploading one item, boom. Okay, so now it's in here. So then I should be able to find it. There it is. So then now click on this link. And now this is a very common issue I run into all the time. You're like, oh, that's the image. I mean, you're gonna grab this URL. This URL does not work for anything. This URL's trash because it's got all the SharePoint stuff in it. But if you click on up here, view original, then you see a nice clean URL, right? It's just the GIF or GIF, or whatever, however you pronounce it. So I'm going to do a control C. So now if I go over here, I'm like, all right, you, instead of using that one, I want you to use this URL, oh, but I'm going to have to wrap that in some things. So it works, yay. And so then now that that works, if I file, save, and publish this around, then anyone that has access to that SharePoint URL would work. I probably really wouldn't store this in SharePoint unless like literally the whole world had access to that SharePoint. Really, you'd want to store it somewhere and, you know, had anonymous access. So then that way you never had to worry about authentication and cookies and things. But either way, now that that's done, we know that if we go back over here to our app and if we close out and come back in, right, we're going to see those changes. That was uh, another one of those little gotchas I ran into with components um, that I thought you guys should probably know a little bit about. And I think with all that said, though, I think that's everything I want to kind of cover here. You know, remember, keep in mind, there's a whole bunch of stuff to learn about components. I probably should make another version of that video that just kind of goes a little bit deeper. But, you know, go check that video out just because it'll get you building that first component, the header bar you just saw up there at the top. Or if you're one of my subscribers to training.powerapps911.com, you can just go download that uh, component yourself and not have to mess with all that. Um, but other than that, you know, you've got the component library now. Please go forth with it. I know you guys are going to have questions and thoughts, other scenarios you want to see me cover. Leave comments below. I answer every single one of them, which is shocking to a lot of people, but I answer all of them. So, and I think with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.